Let's talk about debugging for loops. We'll take the example of simulating coin flips. I'll start by making an object called coin that just has the options heads or tails, but instead of typing in heads or tails, I'll code a heads as a zero, and I'll code tails as one, so that my coin is just this vector length two with elements zero and one. If I want to simulate a flip of my coin, really what I'm going to do is draw one of these elements out at random, right? So when you flip a coin, you get heads or tails at random if the coin is fair. In R, that would be equivalent to typing in sample coin and then one, indicating that we're drawing out one element from this vector at a time. So here are my simulated coin flips. Let's say that I want to run an experiment, and my experiment is just going to be flipping this coin 20 times. So I'll make an object called flips, and I'll set that to 20. Every time I run this experiment, I'm going to flip my coin 20 times. That'll give me a vector of length 20 that consists of zeros and ones. But I want to run this experiment multiple times. I want to replicate my experiment. So I'll make an object called reps that indicates the number of replications. We'll begin with setting reps to 100. Because this is going to be a repetitive task, I'm going to use a for loop to run this experiment. So I'll say for i in one through reps, what do I want to do 100 times? Well, I want to flip my coin, and then I want to store that result. So I'll store result. Now, if I'm running this experiment 100 times, and every time I run it, I get 20 results, then I'm going to need a matrix to store these results in. So I can make an object called res to indicate results. And I'm going to initialize this as a matrix of NAs. And I want to have my number of rows equal to reps. And I want to have one column for each coin flip. OK, so here we can see, based on this indexing, that res is a matrix with 100 rows, 20 columns. And every element right now is NA, but we'll be filling in those elements. So how do I flip my coin? Well, I want to use sample. So I'll type in sample coin. And I want to sample that flips number of times. And I will just call this TMP for a temporary result that I'm then going to store. So how do I store it? Well, I need to put this in res, right? So I'll say res gets TMP. Hopefully you guys can see a couple of errors right off the bat here. But if you don't, let's just assume that we think everything's OK. We try to run this. We'll get an error message. This error message is telling us that we got an error with this sample function. So there's an error on this line. We can't take a sample larger than the population when replace equals false. If this doesn't make any sense to you, it's a really good idea to just copy the error, paste it into Google, and see what you find. If this does make sense to you, then you realize that we're trying to take 20 elements from this vector that only has length 2. So we want to take 20 elements out of this vector. Well, we can only do that if we're sampling with replacement. In other words, if I choose a 1 and store that, I need to replace that 1 and then take another sample if I want to be able to do that 20 times. The way you can sample with replacement is by specifying the argument replace equals true. So now every time I execute this, I'm going to be getting a vector of length 20 that consists of zeros and ones. And that's exactly what I want. So these would be results from an experiment. And then I want to store those results in my res object. So if I rerun this, I didn't get any error messages. So maybe everything's OK. Let's take a look at our result. Well, if I type in res, I see that that's just a vector of length 20. But what I really wanted was a matrix with 100 rows and 20 columns. So what's going on here? Well. My problem is, for every iteration here, I'm just overwriting this object, res, instead of filling out the rows as I intended. And the reason for that is I haven't actually indexed properly. So instead of overwriting res, what I really want to do 
is fill in the rows, right? So I'm doing this reps number of times, and there are reps number of rows. So every one of these repetitions is going to correspond to a row in this matrix. So the way I can fill out the row i in this matrix is by indexing i and then a comma. And I'll leave this blank so that I'm filling out every column. Let's give this another shot. OK, so I didn't get any error messages. Let's check to see if our results are what we might expect. OK, this is looking much better. So we, hear, we have a big matrix here with 100 rows and 20 columns. And that's what I was expecting to get from this experiment. So this illustrates a really important point in R. When I didn't index properly and I was just overriding this object, I didn't get an error message. But I was still making a pretty serious error. So just because you don't get an error message does not indicate that you're getting the result you think you're getting. It's really important to double check to make sure that your result makes sense and is what you're expecting.